Let me go straight to Amanda Clinton now because this is an area where uh, she has an interest because uh, she represents some of the victims of the uh, men's gold situation. And just to give you an idea of how, you know, huge this situation is, you have in excess of 16,000 investors or customers involved. They have put several amounts of money into men's gold and they have lost them. Some, we are told, have died as a result of the, second, the, the situation. Some have for, fallen ill. Some needed the money for hospital and for medication. They didn't get it. And out of that, a lot has happened. There's in excess of 1.68 billion Ghana cities at stake. The Attorney General or the state put Namwan as in Nana Apia Mensa, the owner of Men's Gold Ghana Limited, defunct, the Chief Executive Officer, before the court in 2019 for dozens of charges over this matter. It's taking three years, and literally nothing has happened. And then, this week, uh, his case was moved from the circuit court, is it, to now the high court with 36 uh, counts of um, offenses involving fraudulent dealing and money laundering. What sort of progress is this, if any at all? Amanda, let's start with you. Thank you. Well, I, I, I mean, I completely agree with what you've just said. You know, it's been more than three years later. Nothing happened with the initial 61 charges, and it was in completely the wrong court. I think it was in the circuit court. And when you've got this kind of volume of, of money involved and the, the amount of uh, 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 victims, we would ordinarily have expected it to have gone to the high court. But, you know, we're grateful that now at least the matter is at the High Court, and it's actually 39 charges, 25 um, of, of those charges are defrauding by false pretenses. It is a, a little too much too late, but in terms of, you know, all this time has passed, but um, I do commend the Attorney General's Department for at least saying they were very much investigating the matter, um, and by reducing the charges to 39, I, I really do believe it's because they, they, they really want to pursue those charges. Um, Attorney General da, um, Dami can go one step further because when you've got money laundering charges, it means that the person was cleaning the money. So I think the public have to be corrected in saying that, you know, the money is gone, it's just disappeared, that's the end of the matter. When you have 25 money laundering charges, it means that the person was cleaning the money they were liquidating it, they were putting it in cash, and we do know that Nana Pia Mensa uh, does, does prefer uh, crypto as well in terms of, 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 of one of his uh, uses of currencies is crypto. So it is for the Attorney General's Department perhaps to go um, one step further and you know, exercise the international arm um, of the AG's department to get in touch uh, with uh, countries that he frequented, including South Africa and Spain, um, etc., to just see what sort of assets he has. And if he's so involved in crypto, um, also get in touch with specialized departments um, who, although some people think crypto can't be traced, it can to some extent, to just see how much he's holding in crypto, how much he's holding in other countries, and to get back some of this money um, uh, for the victims, because it's not too late to get back some of this money. And even though he says, I don't even own a car, I think he very much owns slightly more than a car, even if it's not um, in Ghana. Mm. So from, is it uh, 61 charges to now uh, 39, 39. 39 charges? Yeah. What's, seven what, is money laundering and seven is um, fraudulent breach of trust and 25 is defrauding by false pretenses. What, what's the hope that if it has taken three years to mark time here, what's the hope 
that there will be any progress, so to speak, now that the, these new charges have been uh, put before the court? I think there is a lot of hope. I mean, I think we have a, a relatively new attorney general who's trying to uh, prove his mark in terms of distinguish himself from other attorney generals and, you know, possibly to carry on in the party in some capacity. Um, so hopefully that will incentivize him um, to make a mark. Um, and making a mark, uh, one of the ways you can make a mark is, is such a high profile case such as this and show that without him, mm. you know, there wouldn't have been such a, a difference. So I hope he's incentivized um, in that regard. And I think just because of the sheer volume of paper trace or paper trail, uh, the fact that, you know, it's, it's, it's not like any of this can be denied. Um, it very much um, helps the state establish a case and, and, and go beyond proving the case. And if they have wasted more than three years, they, they would say they haven't wasted it because it's true. You know, it does take investigation to get the, a case up to the standard. And I work to the Attorney General's Department, so, you know, I, I do know the wheels of justice do take time. Mm. But it is for them to go that step further and really assess what is happening to Nana Piemense's assets in different countries? How was he holding that money? Because, you know, he was on a lot of flights to South Africa. In particular, every given week he was on, 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 on multiple flights, allegedly, uh, to South Africa and spent a lot of time in South Africa and different countries and Spain and, and different countries like that. So are these assets there? What's happening to his sister and wife who were also charged? Do they have some of these assets? And you know, as a sign of good faith, give it back to the people. Mm. And um, Mr. Mensa also came out saying um, this week, I think, don't compare men's gold to DKM. <laughs> and I would never compare men's gold, or I think a lot of people wouldn't compare men's gold to DKM. They would compare it to Piriani, or, uh, I, or unless I'm saying it wrong, but that was another Piram. Ponzi Piram. scheme. Piram, yeah. Piram, yeah. Piram. Yes, they would compare to that um, many years ago. And so if he's looking for, for, for precedence of of what his operation is being compared to, I think it would be very apt to compare it to another so, major some of, some of the customers, um, Ponzi scheme. Some of the customers have been reaching out to us and they are wondering what sort of coincidence is this, that practically nothing happens in three years, then the man shows his face again, he begins to use a, process, a process that they believe is yet another way of defrauding them asking them to pay some uh, 650 Ghana CDs, you know, to verify themselves or they lose their money and so on. And some actually subscribe to this. Then mm -hmm. suddenly the state is back on his case. Yes, I mean, well, I think rightfully um, the Attorney General's Department and, and, and the President faced um, huge pressure um, that, you know, they must be seen as acting, uh, particularly for such a high profile case. And so they, they have sent this matter to the High Court. It does seem a little timely, but perhaps we can give them the benefit of the doubt, um, uh, particularly because it does take a while to, to truly build a case. For instance, in America, the case against uh, President Trump could have, you know, some people would have handled that immediately. It took years because what those people are now facing um, in terms of charges, it's going to stick. There's no way they're getting out of those charges. Mm. And so sometimes it does take the state some time uh, to build a case. But we don't want, we don't just want, you know, him convicted and, um, you know, possible jail time, etc. We really want the state to show that um, we are far more sophisticated in, in, in chasing this money. Mm. Um, because if you have... 25 uh, or, or seven money laundry charges, and there's far more, but they have seven money laundry charges. It suggests he cleaned the money. He, 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 he cleaned it so that it moved somewhere. And so it is for the state to show, you know, we're far more sophisticated in getting in touch with our counterparts right. and trying to move that money. I my, think. My, my final question to you will be uh, the people who are speaking of a suspicion that the state did not sincerely intend to prosecute him for reasons including claims and rumors that 
you know, he had threatened because he would spill some beans somewhere, he would implicate some people for some wrongdoing, and that he had been a financier of the governing party and so on. It is the reason he was being held by another country through a judicial process, and we went for him and brought him here, saying that we needed him here to face more serious, you know, prosecution, and nothing seems to go on. Mm -hmm. I mean, it, it is a little sad because a similar thing happened with, I think, the Hush Puppy case, a Nigerian in Dubai, and Nigeria said that we want him, and then the U.S. just took him, um, saying that they doubted that he would face proper charges in Nigeria, so the U.S. just extradited him and are dealing with him there. Uh, for crime. And um, so Ghana must not gain that sort of reputation um, whereby in future other countries might not hand back our citizens to us on the basis that, well, this clearly is a case that nothing has been done thus far. And it, it is slightly timely, not just because of um, the, the public uproar, it's also timely because, you know, um, the government is, is facing a lot of pressure because of the DAPA case. All right. And, uh, and, and so maybe, you know, this is quite timely to, to take attention away from that case. I don't know. All right. But we just hope that it serves um, the men's golders' purpose, mm. which is to make sure he faces, um, he, he faces justice mm. and the Attorney General's Department does look for this money in South Africa, Spain, and all the countries he frequented. Okay. Uh, I said that would be my last question, but this should be it. Um, some of the customers are sending me messages and um, they want to know what's, what's your thinking uh, when you appear, when the case goes back to court on the 19th of September, what's, what's going to be asked for? That's like uh, Jachi Kwesing, it should be a daily trial for him? should happen is that I, this is very much a public interest case so I, I do hope as much of the media shows up <laughs> to uh, to this case uh, and report back if anything is being done or we're going to have like uh, 36 adjour adjournments so I think that's the first step that the media should show up and, and actually see that uh, you know justice is being done mm. and secondly I really do think that bail should be revisited um, just because it is a different court and, um, you know, the other case has died and so it's been resurrected at the High Court. And so it is for the, for the judge to perhaps consider if, if more of, of a bail amount is requested or is needed and does he have a high risk of absconding if he's even still in the country because a lot of people online are saying is he even in the country mm. and um, to just address the complexity of this case and revisit should bail be granted if um, there's a lot of money involved and he's a high risk and and, and how is she go she or he going to counter those arguments you know when addressing bail so I think I think the, the media is going to play a very important part um, in this case. And I right. think um, bail should be revisited. All right. Um, so forgive me again, but you were seeking that there will be some government intervention to the customers, right? Mm -hmm. Very much. I, I do believe that the government um, has the resources to do this. Uh, they have the resources to do this, uh, particularly because of um, their international counterparts and reaching out and finding out where this money went. And the whole basis of the state's case, uh, particularly the one that they filed, is that he, he literally used the money as his personal piggy bank. Mm. And he did that to move money to brew marketing and to move a considerable amount of money to his, his personal accounts. And we know the money isn't in his personal accounts anymore because, again, the state took too long All to right. um, seek injunctions. Okay. So the, the states can go after this um, internationally and um, by squeezing an APM and to, 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 to give up some of this money that actually does exist. Okay, thank you very much, Amanda Clinton. Uh, she's been representing uh, some of the customers of Men's Gold and has been advocating very strongly that... Um, Nana Piamesa should not go free, and more particularly, the monies should be found 
and paid back to the customers, some of whom have died, and some of whom are dying, some of whom have lost their jobs, some of them have been put into debt that they never imagined uh, they would find themselves in. Let me uh, get to Mary. Mary, um, in the new twist of things, people actually believe that this um, uh, 650 or so that uh, he asked people to send for this verification thing, he's made another you know, bunch of money in that and that the government should be interested in presently taking these monies as well. Certainly. Well, it, it's interesting, and this, I believe, is one of the saddest cases this country is contending with, apart from the DKMs and others. I believe that Ghanaians have allowed themselves, <laughs> our gullibility levels are amazing sometimes. Perhaps it's also because of the desperation we find ourselves in. But then I believe that our security agencies should be more proactive than they have done. Certainly, there must have been some intel to the fact that something like this was even brewing. But if, permit me to say that if they lost that or lost out on that, when this thing appeared, they should have and nipped it in the bud from the initiation. Unfortunately, some people have paid. And so this should be a ground for them to hold them certainly accountable for taking, if even it's 50 CDs per person, it's a lot of money. We cannot continue to allow people to perpetuate some of these Ponzi schemes and get away with them so freely. It's beginning to embolden others to want to do more, uh, security agencies and also uh, the Attorney General who has already resurfaced again with new charges in this case, should be interested to take this particular one and ensure that those whose monies have been taken are refunded immediately. Mm. It doesn't make sense at all. And okay. I believe uh, our leaders or those who have been put in places of power should ensure that they do not allow some of these wicked schemes to uh, 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 manifest themselves in our society. All right, thank we you very much. We are better than mm. this. Okay. Um, the, the Fred Forcing uh, has been identified as the convener of the men's gold customers. And he says, I should be putting numbers to the deaths that have occurred as a result of this. And he says over 210 people have died as a result of this. And people are going through daily travail because of this. So they need their money as quickly as possible. He says that uh, if you look at count 31, um, Abigail, that is Namwan's sister, who in 2020, 2019-2020 uh, told them that they won't pay the customers because if they did, her brother will become poor. Um, allegedly, 66 million of their money was given to her by Nam One. And also, the recent uh, 650 Ghana CDs to ver verify your status and so on, she is part of that, um, that structure. He says, a Momo merchant turned millionaire overnight something must be done and quickly yes um, richard well <clears throat> it's, it's very sad i you know there, there's uh, several angles to this number one issue the first primary one for me is the people uh, who sadly uh, are caught into this of course we, we had a conversation about their seeming believability yeah. of a company whose modus operandi took their savings exact, from banks yes <laughs> and and interestingly oh. uh, gave gave it all their savings in most cases and in fact I especially don't know, people in the security organizations yes. the soldiers i mean i, I don't police. know i don't know if uh, the individual practices hypnotism on i don't know because incidentally come back and say people should pay some amount and they believe to this. verify yeah. investment which perhaps they have certificates to 
before they can be ascertained as having been investors in the business. For me, it's very shocking and very sad. Um, so that part, I think that we sympathize with all Ghanaians. Yes, we can say they were gullible and all of that. Their own faults in terms of judgment going into it cannot be the center of conversation. Anybody could have fallen for it. In fact, the evidence that a lot of people fell for it means that it has some believability to it. So that part, I think, that is clear. And we sympathize with the people, especially now with knowing about some 200 or so people having perished because mm. of the investments being locked there. Um, so certainly, I think we should uh, uh, sympathize with people and then also support the idea that whatever uh, assets he has and investments elsewhere should be found and you know, apply to pay the people. Mm. Uh, but my understanding is um, um, your, your good self, a uh, lawyer, can, can guide the conversation. It's a, it's a process, isn't it? That is a criminal case, and so you have to go through the processes uh, for a judgment, whether or not he's guilty or not, and then decision on the assets will be made. Now, so if that is the case, then I guess that uh, we should commend uh, the Attorney General now appropriately uh, taking steps to have this case probably be looked at at the, at the appropriate court now to come to a conclusion as expeditiously as possible so we can get to the point of settling uh, the liabilities of the company to uh, its customers. I think they that... Feel, they feel government can make some advances to them, you know, to sort of cushion them somehow because they can't be waiting forever. It's been three years yeah. of an attempt to prosecute and nothing has happened yet. Yeah, well, I think, I think that's, that's a fair uh, request to make, but of course, it's not one that government has to do necessarily because of the situation. But it's, it's a compassionate call that I think that uh, if, if conditions were right, if the advocacy is pursued uh, to the point it has to be, I think that uh, if government is able, they will. Uh, but the substantive matter is how to get the, the, the culprit, if you like, who has defrauded people, given the assumptions allegedly uh, that we have seen, even in the case I was just reading through uh, the charge sheet and seeing uh, the kinds of uh, uh, you know, counts that have leveled against him. Mm -hmm. I think that um, this whole number one issue uh, is one that we all as a people need to look at. But mm -hmm. of course, uh, where we are now, I think um, um, the lawyers or I think uh, Madam Clinton is the lawyer for uh, the customers. I think her position of you know, drawing the media into this, I guess, is one that is welcome. But my understanding uh, is also that the Attorney General with the new uh, charges that they've, they've, uh, uh, they've brought against them is committed to have an expeditious trial. So perhaps we'll see, as okay. you're asking, right. a daily trial mm -hmm. of the matter to ensure that uh, the case is decided uh, quickly and so we can get to um, addressing the primary concern of the... Right. Of the Yaga, what, what, but the one small point I want to make is that uh, people should not uh, get into the space of trying to look at this as perhaps the initial attempts were, were slow. Because you know it's a very complex case where you needed to understand, it's a technical space, you need to understand uh, the full facts of the, of the matter and understand the complexity of the investment it was doing. It was a so novel thing. I don't think that we've had a, a similar transaction. You think that's a good excuse? Um, I'm saying that that- By the time the charges were filed, the, the state was clear about what was at stake. Well, it was clear that he's violated some... Uh, so, in fact, in the new charges, really nothing has, nothing much has changed from 61 to 39 of them. Mm -hmm. uh, just that some of them, you feel they are not necessary. Right. They won't, you know, avail you anything. So, you take them off. Well, I'm saying, as a lawyer, you know that. So, now that, that a, a conscious effort has been made to distill the, the, the charges, and so that shows some new energy and commitment to want to go to court with the proper uh, uh, case that they know can then deliver the, mm. the, the judgment they're looking for. Right. And also, the, 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 the presence of mind to bring the case to the right court with the proper um, you know, uh, jurisdiction to address the matter. It's also, for me, uh, is one that we okay. recommend. Thank you. Yes, uh, Mama Yaga, which angle are you looking at this? They are saying the state 
confiscated some assets, some properties belong to, belonging to number one. They want to see, you know, to what effect. It's been three years. Well, <clears throat> this is very sad. Mm. And if you ask me which angle, I will say, let's look at it from the right angle. Everybody seems to be running away from looking at it from the right angle. Which angle is this? You have a constitution that says that the Attorney General and Minister of Justice shall be responsible for initiation and prosecution of all criminal matters. And that all criminal prosecutions must be done in his name. And this is an Attorney General that is taking three years, not one month, not two months, hmm? not one year, not two, three years, to decipher what are the appropriate charges to prefer against Nana Mesa. No, there were 61 charges already. But they just dropped and changed to 39. That's right. Is that not it? Yes. So it means that it has taken them three years to figure out that the 61 were wrong and that it is this 39 that should be the proper charges. And it's taken them three years to figure out that they had filed the matter in the wrong court and that it is the high court. That is the proper court. What other evidence because of you add, Because you add money laundering charges, money laundering charges will have to go to the high court rather than the circuit court. So that's And, and it's taken three years. Twist. It's taken three years for the Attorney General of Ghana and the Minister of Justice to figure out that for a money laundering charge, you should, you should go to the high court or that this fact, which clearly shows money laundering hmm? from the very beginning. It is only after three years that the Attorney General of Ghana is getting to know that he should add money laundering charges and therefore he should go to the High Court. Prosecutors amend uh, charges all the time. But what's the new And it is taking three years, three good years. We are talking about the fate of 16,000 Ghanaians. Almost 40 again. Whose tax money mm. Mm, is what is used to buy the luxury car that the Attorney General is driving in. And the comfortable office and his luxurious travel expenses at the cost of the taxpayer. And these taxpayers have been defrauded mm, by Nam one And it's taken three years for this very competent Attorney General. These, these are taxpayers who were warned and they ignored the warnings. Even at times when whether the state, they were warned, the state, whether the, they were warned, the state intervened, they were rather with the man against the state. That is even worse because the state sat by the Bank of Ghana, the police, the security services, the, the attorney general, everybody sat idly by and allowed this man to defraud citizens. Even if the people giving the money were participating in the conduct, they were also committing a criminal offense. And the state had the responsibility to stop them. From the very beginning, I said that this is fraud. This is obviously fraud. Look, what are the charges? Minerals and mining law related offenses. Selling gold without proper license or buying gold without license. Largely fraud okay? charges. Mm. Largely basic fraud charges that first year criminal law. Eh? That's, those are the questions you are asked. Criminal law. Is that not it? Basic criminal law. 15 to 25 years of uh, jail for exactly. an offense is not basic. Banks and special. No, not, mm. not the offense, mm. but the, the law is, is basic. When you go to, 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 to law school, I mean, uh, the law faculty, criminal law, issues like fraud, you know, defrauding by false pretenses, forgery, and etc. They are basic. The facts are obvious. So I'm saying that the proper angle from which we should be looking at it is gross failure by our attorney general to protect citizens and when they have been defrauded to hold accountable this singular person who has caused this and the charges are not complicated the facts are not difficult to decipher and so i i feel 
scandalized for anybody to even say that we should commend the Attorney General that today, after three years. You, you said blame Attorney General for not protecting. That was Securities Commission, I think, Bank of Ghana. They were the ones. All of them. And, and they issued the All statements. They issued the warnings. All of, they are not just supposed to issue warnings. They are supposed to march troops to the place and shut it down and arrest the gentleman. That's what they were supposed to do. Okay. So clearly, there's been complicity at several levels. And now we can also see, without you know, uh, being told in, in very clear terms, that the Office of the Attorney General has failed woefully to cut out its basic responsibilities. Mm. So, and, and we are so being told that we should commend him for now bringing you know, fresh charges. So moving forward, on this, on this 19th of uh, September, the case comes back to court. From where you sit as a lawyer, what should be the posture of both the court, the Attorney General, and those involved in this matter? Listen carefully. These are very simple matters. The charges are simple. The facts are there. There's no dispute about the facts. Convicting this gentleman won't take months, if really, the Attorney General and his team are serious. As for the issue of tracing the money, that's a completely different exercise. The Ghanaian legal system is interested in somebody who has carried out such crimes to be convicted and sentenced. Those whose monies he took, mm. they are individually interested in recovering their money. So the two tracks can take place simultaneously, concurrently, whatever. But you cannot say that, you know, uh, let's... The attorney general should, should just focus on getting the money for us. Right. How about the, the crime that this? How about okay. those who have died? How, right. What happens to them? Um, um, Osman, uh, you are the last person to speak on this, and very briefly. So, do you share with the views expressed that by now the state should be updating the customers and all of us how far it has gone in efforts to, as it were, trace the monies, uh, assets that have been confiscated, what has happened, and so on. At least. That aspect, not the criminal trial. Yes, Samson. I think, I think so, um, and I'm and I'm very uh, uh, interested in the distinction Honourable has just brought, because I had been looking for that angle for a long time. The distinction between the criminal trial and and the steps that have been taken to recover the money. These, two, this, these are two separate tracks of legal proceedings that must be going on. And so, but of course, I agree. I said yes to your question because if you look at the case, I always ask myself, is, is men's goal on trial or number one hmm. as a person? Because, because the whole operation was done through men's goals. And within our legal system, we know that corporate entities have separate existence and separate uh, capacities. Yeah, he's been telling the customers that. He's been telling them yeah. that they didn't give him any money. They gave it to men's yeah. goals. So they should stop trying to attack him. That's, that's, that's the point I'm making. So, of course, fraud, fraud is one of the reasons for which we can pierce the corporate veil. But I think, it's my opinion, that it is the court that pierces the corporate veil. Now, I don't know if the, the, the Attorney General can pierce the veil before the court comes to that determination. And I don't know what is on the charge sheet, whether it is number one that's on the charge sheet, or it is uh, men's goal. But of course, if a corporate entity is convicted, it is the officers of the company or the corporate entity that will also be seen, be deemed to have committed the offense. So, separate from the criminal trial, what steps are gov is government taking to recover the money? Because, look, if you ask me, the whole of this thing is as a result of some regulatory failure. Yeah. Regulatory failure. The government is the regulator. And I, I don't like it when people want to blame the investors because the investors, if you are investing in a regulated industry, it is a trust you are expressing in your government for regulating the industry and making sure that it is safe for investment. Now, if the government upon 
when we hear that some assets of Mary's Gold have been confiscated, I don't know how true that is, but if assets have been confiscated, it's not like Mary's Gold continued in operation and came to a point where it became insolvent and then went to something happened to trigger off what we are we are seeing today and it came from regulators right. so if regulators have taken steps we they must update the people as to what steps they are taking to recover the assets of men's gold and distribute it to them as predators all right okay thank you uh, very much uh, we, we no we, we we need we have two other issues to deal with uh, amanda amanda wants to make a, a small point amanda if you, if you can do that under a minute and uh, Richard, yes. just about a minute sure. too, so that, yeah, we can go. Yeah. Hello, yes, just to um, clarify um, a few points. Money laundering uh, charges were in the original uh, 61 charge sheet. There were a few money laundry charges. So just to clarify that point so that it should have gone to the high court in the first instance. Um, the second point is no one is per se saying the attorney general has done a great job. But, you know, being on the side of people who often have to lobby the government to act, we often have to encourage them for every little thing they do and then hope that they do the rest. So speaking negatively about them and saying they've done a crap job is not going to incentivize the Attorney General's department okay, I get you. to do more. <clears throat> okay. So we're happy that they've taken this step. And, we're going to right. do, and then the, the last point is um, five years. The last point I just want to make is that uh, th this operation took five years. They were not gullible people. It was for SEC and Bank of Ghana to have shut them down before five years. And the fact that they kept them going meant that people thought this was a legitimate operation. And the bigger um, victims or the, the, the bigger amounts came within the last two years. So had the regulators done their job in the first two years, you know, the, the, the bloodbath wouldn't have happened. <clears throat> okay. And the final point is, Nana Piermenta seems to have properties in different people's names. Some people have been texting me. And that maybe it is for government to incentivize the public that should they have proof of who's um, the properties he, he does have in different people's names, etc. that maybe they can have a small reward or something for identifying those properties and, uh, and, and telling government about it. Good idea. So Thank you very much. Yes, Richard, yeah. 30 you know, seconds. Some sense, I was yeah. just saying that uh, we need to stay away from the attempt to politicize this politicize. matter. Politicize? No, 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 please. Allow politicize? Me. No, 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 just, just allow me. I wasn't referring to you even. I'm just saying that we should stay away from the attempt <laughs> to politicize the issue. Because really, if you look at this, this whole, this whole men's goal story started in 2016. Okay, so and that's so, where you so, take so, us. No, 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 Let's yeah, move yeah, on. So I'm saying, yeah. Yeah, so I'm just saying that we should move away from okay. that. Because if we do, then we we'll have to go back and okay. study analysis. Thank but you. the assurance yeah, I want to give okay. to clarify okay. Okay. Yeah. The, the attempt to clarify the a point Osman made yeah. in respect of the, some of the assets seized. I think I understand that uh, uh, some of his vehicles uh, somewhere seized, seized, somewhere sold, seized, and they've been auctioned. The mm -hmm. monies are lodged in an account. Some gold bars have been recovered, and they are waiting for the determination of the trial. But the point I want you to make for our viewers is that because it's a criminal trial. The, the substantive case of him having committed yes. a crime. Has I think to be you've made that point, and that's yes. important. It has point. to be established. Thank you very much. Decision about the asset and what Thank to you. do with it. Thank you. That's that's upon. right. And um, uh, the convener for the men's gold uh, people says uh, men's gold properties were sold in the full glare of the public, um, and. Okay, so they, they feel also that the Securities and Exchange Commission uh, failed abysmally in the process, and that's why they are in the circumstances that they are. And some are also suggesting that this is a point where we should begin to talk about um, the question of uh, unexplained wealth so that we empower the OSP properly and charge to do these things. We will not get into some of this. Uh, troubles. Then uh, one message here says that the billions that the state has spent on banking bailouts is cited as one of the reasons for the economic difficulties Ghana is in. That is factual. And the culprits are working free, duping citizens even more, while taxpayers are being asked to pay more taxes. It's unconscionable. There's no reason why this fellow 
should be out on bail. Actually, it's said that he is with police protection. We'll be right back to deal with the matters of the OSP fighting uh, the order of the court to unfreeze Cecilia Dapes' frozen accounts and to return the seized monies to Cecilia Dapade.